Hey everyone, Shadow here, and welcome to another Marvel Contest of Champions video. So this is Act 7.1.1, the first quest in Act 7, and I'll be taking you through what I consider to be the easy path, but something to know about Act 7. You want to examine the paths, and you want to evaluate them depending on your roster. So... The path that I've chosen is easy for me because I have champions that are great counters for that path. All right, so this is the path that I chose here. And you will notice that I brought in Corvus. And you're about to see why. All right, we're going to look at the nodes here. Now, all throughout, this is the global that you have in Act 7.1. Star power you're going to get a lot more damage in with your six stars because of that. Okay, and you can read that there. Now, this is interesting. You've got Oscillate and you've got Invade. All right, now, that actually works in your favor, especially when you have someone like Corvus. So the strategy that you're going to see me use is actually the opposite of what I usually do with Oscillate. Usually when I have an Oscillate node, I wanna make the most of when they are, you know, in their aggressive phase, like right here. But you'll notice that I've been hitting them a little bit and backing off. Now I'm attacking. That's because of that invade. Look at the damage that I'm doing through his block. All right, that's why. So my strategy was to actually wait for the defensive phase and then go in all right now i'm keeping an eye on my charges i don't want to lose my charges here all right so i'm, I'm hitting them a little bit just to kind of keep him off so i don't get backed up into the corner but i'm really waiting for his defense right here armor up now he's going to go back and block this is what i want all right just look at the damage that is invade now when i saw invade on Oscillate, I immediately thought of this strategy. Uh, in AQ, there was a node that I would take that had Invade, and that's exactly how I took that node. Uh, I didn't want to hit them. I only wanted to hit their block, and I was able to take them out because Corvus, in case you did not know, can crit through your block. So that Invade, beautiful. You actually want to hit their block more than anything all right so giving you another look at the nodes but the uh strategy is uh going to be a little different on this one now i could have brought in corvus but he won't get a charge so there's no real reason the other one it was iron man he was also a tech so i was able to get some charges for corvus but for this one no charge so i may as well go in with ghost He's just going to tear it up. Don't have to worry about hitting into their block. Don't need to care about the invade uh, or anything like that. You can see here she doesn't do any of the damage that Corvus does. You know, look at this. You know, so it's all good. Um, I kind of messed up there only because he surprised me by attacking. Usually they are like full defense mode. And so I felt safe in attacking him while he was there into his block but then he suddenly just fired it off. And so I blocked because I couldn't evade fast enough. All right, so here he's aggressive and uh, I'm getting tagged a little bit into my block, but it's all good. You know, here I'm just trying to build up a little bit and I got some good damage in here, even though they had the uh, armor up from the defensive portion. Now I'm a little bit safer here because he's got two bars of power and I know I can evade that. Okay, see, no problem, no problem there. That special one though, I have to either be phased like you just saw me do there, or I need to be far enough back that I can evade it without any difficulty. So we got beat up a little bit on that one, um, but we got through and uh, let me say, that Act 7, I had more fun in Act 7 so far, 
We're only doing, you know, 7.1, but I had more fun than I did in any of Act 6. All right, so I'm healing up Corvus a little bit, and of course I'm going to bring Corvus because that's another charge for Corvus. You notice he has two. So he got two from Iron Man because Iron Man is an Avenger. That's one mission. He's also tech. That's two missions. So I got two missions for one fight. This is a mutant, so I get another mission for that. The only one left would be uh, auto block and evade. I have to knock them down after they auto blocked or evaded. Uh, now, uh, I don't remember, because uh, it's been a little bit since I've done this one. Uh, I, I think I completed Act 7 before season 23 and so it's been the entire season i did those videos put them all out and i've just been waiting to go back and edit these videos so i'm doing that all right now let me tell you something about nova i hate him i hate him with a passion and as a result i don't really know how to fight nova effectively and you're gonna see that so i'm thinking all right you know, let me go in with the hood. Um, he usually does a good job against Nova. All right. So here we go. You know, we're doing okay. It's looking all right so far. Uh, but one thing that does mess me up with hood, when he is invisible, I go for the parry and they miss. Basically, I miss the parry because they missed. And that can easily mess me up. All right, so at this point, you know, they are in their defensive, but you see he's attacking anyway. But so far, we're doing good, you know. Um, the hood is putting it down. I'm able to evade that special one. Okay, look at this, we're, we're doing good. Like I said, hood usually does a really good job against Nova. All right, so we're just basically fighting Nova like a, um, like I fought him before, uh, the oscillate is a little bit annoying, but you'll notice every time he hits me into my block, I'm taking some big damage because of that invade. So you want to try not to take too many blocked hits or else you're going to either die or end up using a lot of potions. All right. So just from the block damage alone, you see I'm almost gone. So that's something to be, um, be aware of and uh, be on guard against. So we've got him down to 43%, okay? And I'm like, all right, you know, we should be able to, you know, maybe finish him, but just look, every parry, it hurts. Look at this. It's just, I can't take any more blocked hits. And the hood goes down. And that was all she wrote for him. But he put in that work. He put in some good work. All right, so, now I'm thinking, let me just finish this fight off with Waff. She does good damage, big boy damage. All right, so let's just do it, all right? Look at that. And then he's unblockable. I'm like, wait, 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 what just happened? Why are you unblockable? All right, Waff doesn't have a lot of health. So all of that hurt real bad. And then I pushed him to a special two, which I don't know how to evade very well. Got caught by the second part of it, wrecked because he was unblockable. And I was just looking at this going, I don't believe this. He was almost dead. And now I just lost Wasp. And I'm like, okay, all right. Let's uh, finish it off with Corvus. No problem, maybe if he auto blocks, um, which I think he did, you know, but now he's unblockable again. And I'm just like, what is going on? Why does he go unblockable? See, I don't know Noball that well. And then look at that. That happened. Now watch this. Why did he stop blocking? I don't know. I was so frustrated, guys. I was so frustrated with that. And I was just like, I don't believe this. I've just lost three of my team to this one Nova. Three. And I'm just like, all right, let's bring in my boy, Omega Red, who is a rank two six star, not even awakened. All right, but he be putting it down. Now look at that damage all into my block because of the invade. And so now 
I'm just like, all right, we need to get this guy down. And we were able to get him down finally. But you see how much damage I took For, to just finish him off. That was a lot of damage. Three down and more than half of Omega's health. And I was not going in there with Ghost because Nova was taking folks out like he was an assassin. All right. So I healed up Ghost just in case there's any shenanigans. And I um, wasn't trying to do this itemless. Uh, but other than that fight, that Nova fight, it was not bad. It was not bad at all. Now, I run suicide. So uh, I expect to have to use, you know, some uh, health potions at the least. All right. Sometimes my suicides backfire on me and I end up having to actually uh, revive because I got taken out by my own suicides. I got too low and then had to do that. All right, but you can see here, we are not having too much trouble. Ghost is doing her thing. Uh, it's great to go up against uh, Morningstar because there's a chance for you to get a bleed on you. So if you do a one hit combo uh, or just hit her until you have the bleed and then dash back, she converts it to that fury and so she can start putting in some good damage. All right, so you see here, we're just fine. Now here, I knew I was gonna finish her off, but one of the dangerous things about doing what I just did, firing off that special two, is that if on the first hit, I get the bleed on me, I'm gonna have the bleed on me for the duration of the special two before I can finally phase it off, so I'll be taking damage. That has killed me before. All right, uh, so just something to be aware of. Uh, it's actually safer to just do one hit combos if you're gonna go up against that Morningstar or um, really anyone like um, Abomination, anyone that's gonna put a debuff on you like that regularly. All right, so here we go. And you may wonder why I'm doing a one hit combo in the beginning. And then you'll notice I'm now letting her swing twice. Uh, basically, when I start, because I run suicides, I have Liquid Courage and Double Edge, and they put a debuff on me each, a poison and a bleed. So I start off because Ghost is awakened. I start off phased. So I have two Furies because it converts both of those. And so doing the one hit combo is gonna maximize my damage while I have those Furies up. Once the Furies are down, I can switch tactics. And now I want to get more power. So letting them swing more will give me power faster because this ghost is awakened, SIG 200, she gets a lot of power, all right? So that's what's behind it. Now, the one thing about fighting uh, Oscillate with Ghost, you want them to be aggressive. Ghost uh, play doesn't do well if they're not gonna be aggressive, all right? So here's the aggressive uh, phase. So this is when I can do the ghost style, okay? You can see here and I'm boom, got her down. Uh, but when she's in that defensive phase, that's the dangerous part. Because as you see, they can still attack you. They're just more defensive. All right, so now this is one of the cool features of Act 7. Just before the boss, you have a choice but, um, as to whether you want to switch out a champion or just go in with your team. Now you cannot switch out anyone that is KO'd. Uh, I believe I found that out here, I'm not sure. I think I tried to switch one out. Um, they have to have at least a little life, but the nice thing about it, let me see, yeah, yep, there you go. So you can't swap out anyone who's KO'd, but as long as they have health, as long as they're alive, doesn't matter if they're almost dead, if you switch them, then they will come in. Like right here, I'm not gonna do that. I was thinking about it. I was thinking about it hard. But they will come in and they will get full health. They get healed up, whoever you swapped in. It's not like incursions where if you swap them in, they come in at the same health and, and you're just stuck there, okay? So at least in this one, if you switch someone in, they will get healed up. Um, I think, yeah, uh, I ended up, uh, not doing it at all because I actually, when I went in here, remember this is the first time I'm experiencing this. 
uh, I thought, ooh, I'll just swap out one of the KO'd guys. Um, even if I have to heal him up, that's fine. Uh, but I was surprised by that. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to revive anybody. Let's just go in. So these are the nodes you're going to have to deal with. I'm not going in with a robot, so I don't have to worry about coolant leak. Uh, Footloose is annoying. All right. Um, every time they fire off a special, you just basically have to be very careful. Um, and you can read the rest of them here. All the specials are unblockable. So if you're comfortable evading those specials, you should be fine. All right. So we're going in with Omega Red. Uh, like I said, I was thinking about bringing in some other people. And I'm like, you know what? I think Omega Red should be okay. I will try to get used to the fight. Uh, I'm often not that good at getting used to fights right off the bat. It usually takes me a little bit, um, at least a few tries, uh, to get used to the style that I'm going to have to adopt to get them down. All right. But with this Omega Red, because he is a six star, because of the global, you'll see he has that fury. He has a permanent fury up, thanks to the global. That's why I wanted to bring in Omega Red. Now, you see, I got caught there um, because I forgot about the uh, Unstoppable. All right, but here's something cool about Omega Red, in case you didn't know. All right, so what I'm trying to do here, I want to get some spores on her. All right, lock it in. She's got 15 spores on her right now. She's taking good damage. Okay, and I have a special three ready. Now, I don't have my death field, so I'm not gonna put any more spores on her. All right, so here we go. I'm evading that one. All you have to do is evade back. Now, I watched and I waited until the spores were about to fall off. Okay, and I knew I wasn't gonna be able to get that heavy off. So I fired the special three right at that time while she had the 15 spores. Look at his health. See what Omega Health, uh, Omega Red's health is doing? Uh, so he heals up an amount based on the number of spores that are on them when you fire off a special three. So I got myself a little healing uh, so I could have a little bit more room. I love Omega Red, he is a beast. Uh, one of the things, even though his prestige is pretty low, you find a lot of people ranking up their six star Omega Reds because of how good he is even without the you know high prestige they don't care they still rank him up and i'm actually in a position uh where i'm thinking about whether i want to take him up i have the five star uh but in this particular situation because six stars got the permanent fury he actually was a little bit better than my uh, five-star Omega Red, I think. I never really tested it. But uh, I'm thinking about whether I want to take him up to rank three. If I can awaken him, he will definitely go to rank three. Um, I, I, like I said, he is, he is awesome. You see, he's just taking her like a champ, okay? Uh, you just have to slow play it a little bit here. The five-star could have done this as well. All right, I've got the death field active, and I went in for the goal. Boom. And we got her down. Did not have to um, use a revive. Uh, some heals. And I didn't even have to swap anybody out. And we were able to get her down. All right, so that's going to do it for this video. Uh, and you'll see here, after you defeat the boss, you still have to move a little bit. I've had it to where I finished it but didn't have enough energy to actually leave. I don't know why they did that. Anyway, that's going to do it, guys. Thank you all for watching the video. Feel free to hit that like button. Leave a comment. Let me know if this helped you out at all. And you all have a blessed day.